Hi, welcome to Parametric House. Uh, in this Rhino Grasshopper tutorial, I want to make a parametric structure between uh, two lines. As you can see here, I can change the number of this structure easily by defining the count, which I'm going to explain. Uh, we also uh, have the length of this pipe, so we can change that if we want to. Uh, again, we also going to talk about the plate of the structure. Uh, we can change it here. You can see here I can change that and it's going to define also the timber uh, inside it so I'm going to also explain this one uh, we can also define the extension of this structure easily and finally we're going to define a plane thickness which is going to be the thickness of the material for the plate and uh, we can bake them in Rhino. For example, this is going to be the connection. We can bake that in layer one and the timbers in layer two. So this will help you to make a parametric structure in Grasshopper easily. And let's get started and take a look at the algorithm. Okay, let me just turn off everything and explain this step by step. Uh, first, we have to define two lines, which I have used the curve uh, to define them. You can see that this is going to be the first uh, line and this is going to be a second line uh, we're going to use the line because it's going to be infinite I'm going to explain it as we go forward okay uh, the first step is to make a perpendicular frame on the first uh, line uh, you can change that by the number of count easily uh, let me just disable the structure so we can get it faster and disable this one and now you can see that it's going to be a little bit faster okay now that we have this plane uh, we're going to use this uh, intersection uh, mathematical uh, line plane component uh, to find the intersection of the second line with these planes, which is going to obviously be this point. And then we can make a line from it. So this uh, first step is to make the parametric lines between these uh, two baselines. Uh, after we produce the line, uh, we have to find, let me explain it here, assume that we have this line. What we have wanted to do is to find a distance from the start and the same distance from the end. And we're going to make that a pipe. So that is not really complicated for this one because we just have to make a pipe from it. Uh, I have used uh, the evaluate length. Uh, remember to make this uh, uh, third input, which is if true the length factor is between 0 and 1. Uh, I have made that into false because we want to give this a, a, a exact length. Okay, So just make that to false and give the length you want. This is going to be the uh, length of the pipe here. We can change that easily. And we have this point from the start. Uh, we also have to flip the curve so we have the same distance from the end. So this is going to be at the end. I uh, use the flip curve. And now we can simply make uh, a line for the start and for the end. And as you can see here, I've used the endpoints. Okay, after we make the line, we have to make a pipe from it. That's really easy. Uh, what we have to do is to right click here and make it a flat. So when I bake that, you can see it's a complete solid here for the start and for the end. Okay, after we produce the pipes, uh, we have to go for the second part of the structure, which is the plate. And what we want to do here is to make the plane here, right? We have to find the plane and then make the plate on it. So what you have to do here is to, from these uh, lines, uh, evaluate, the, uh, use the perpendicular frame exactly at the same T. We have the T from the evaluate length, so we can give this to the T input. And as you can see here, uh, we have this perpendicular frame. Uh, you also have to do that for the uh, end. But remember, because this is going to give you a T negative, as you can see here, and that's going to give you an error, you just have to make it an absolute. So we just give this an absolute and then make the perpendicular frame also at the end. Uh, when we make the perpendicular frame, we can use a plane surface. Let's go to the start. Uh, to make the plane surface, uh, you can make a construct domain from minus x divided by 2 to x by, divided by 2. So for example, if this is the pipe and this is the plane, right? And uh, if we want to make a plate 
by the length L, it's going to be from minus L divided by 2 to L divided by 2, right? And that is also a true for the height. So just use this construct domain and give it a minus x divided by 2 and x divided by 2. And now you can give it a, the exact number you want for the length and the width, okay? Uh, after we produce the plane surface, uh, we want to extract these edges and extrude them in the normal direction. So we can use the construct brep, pick up the edges with a list item. And as you can see here, the number one and number three is the exact edge we want. Let me just turn off the plane. Uh, the plane here so you can see that. Okay, these are the two edges we want. And then we just have to extrude them in the normal direction. For the normal direction, I have used the plane of the face, which you can give it to here, uh, or give it to this one, doesn't matter, it can be the same. Uh, then you, uh, this is a trick you can use, always give a vector to a plane, it's going to pick up the normal direction of the plane, and then multiply that with the extension you want. So this is going to give you the extension of the plate, and then when we have the extrusion, uh, we want to join this to the uh, surface. So I'm going to use a brep join here. You can see that it's going to uh, convert these three parts into one part. So I'm going to use this brep join. And if I bake this, you can see that we have this structure here. Okay. Uh, after we have made this join, we can use a pufferfish plugin uh, from the surface this offset surface tool, which you can give it uh, a thickness. This is the thickness we want. Uh, if the direction is wrong, especially for the end part, we're going to use a minus X. So you can see that this is also true for here. Nothing special here, but because this direction is in the negative side, we just have to give this a minus X uh, for the vector. So when you have the vector, remember that you have to also have a minus x. So the algorithm is the same for the top and the bottom, uh, just these two tweaks you have to do. Okay, after we produce this uh, offset surface, if I bake this, you can see it's not going to give you uh, one simple solid, it's going to give you three. So we have to just use a solid union. And what I want to do is to make a solid union between these surfaces and with the pipes we have here and remember that we have to flatten it because solid union just uh, unites all the inputs that are intersecting so now if I bake that you can see that we have this structure easily as one brep uh, if you want to see how much time it's consuming let's go to profiler and you can see that this is the most hard part of the algorithm that's going to take time to calculate it. Okay, that is going to be uh, also, uh, we bring off the offset surface to this part so we have all of them in one group. So if I bake that, you can see you have the end parts too. And I have bought, uh, made this into one brep so you can use it in your project. Okay, after we produce uh, the structure, let's just turn off everything and turn on this structure. Uh, we also have to make the timber so to make that, what we want to do here is to, uh, again, make a surface here for the start and also make another surface here at the end and then loft them together. Okay, that is the algorithm and that's going to give you the loft surface. So how can we do that? Uh, what we want to do here is to use a plane offset. Uh, the plane offset is going to be simply the plane we had here. We go here. When we made an evaluation from the perpendicular frame, we just offset that so that you can use this uh, great tool called uh, plane offset. And it's going to be the same as the thickness, right? So this thickness is going to also define the plane offset. Uh, the plane surface is going to be in this plane. Uh, for the widths and the height, what we have done here is that, again, we have minus x divided by 2 to x divided by 2, but for the, uh, this is, uh, let me go here and see where it's connected. 
it's connected to the height. So this is okay. This is the height I'm talking about. So let's just go back here and explain it. So what we want to do here is for the height, it's going to uh, be from the same number we have for the height, but for the width, what we have to do here, let me explain it here. So assume that this is the plane and we are looking at from the front, this is the thickness we have from the two sides we extended, right? And this is also going to be the flat of the plate. So for the height, uh, we don't have any problem because it's going to be the same uh, height of the plate. But for the widths, what you have to do is to find the widths and minus that. So it's W minus two thicknesses. Okay, so this is going to be the thickness of the plate. So what we have to do here is to make this number uh, two times the thickness, as you can see here, this is the thickness, and uh, make a subtraction from that and give that for the uh, width. So that is going to give you exactly the surface you want. It's going to be fitting there. If you want to make it a little bit more gap, you can make another mon minus from the subtraction. For example, if I just make this, uh, for example, I'm going to give this 1.2 1, 1. and give that to the inputs, you can see that this is going to give you the gap. So this is going to be the gap you want. So zero is going to be a fit and this is going to give you the gap. So uh, remember that you can give a subtraction to that if you want to make a gap and then we just make a loft and that's it. Uh, now I've used this custom preview to make a custom preview with the material. Uh, you can change that here and also for the timber you can go to the rendered mode so you can see that even better. Uh, if you want to see the edges, I can connect a B rep edge to the loft so you can see the edges here and the B rep edge to the structure connection. And that's it. So uh, this algorithm really helps you to design any structure from a line to another. Uh, and remember, this is going to be a line. For example, if I go to Rhino and draw two lines, this one is small, smaller than this one for the base curve, baseline. It's going to extend it. So because when we have a line and we use this line plane, it's going to say this line is infinite. So we don't have any problems. So if I bring this a little bit up and rotate this, uh, you can see that we have this structure here. And you can play with this, but remember that the length is not really that important. Uh, if you just want for the visualization, you can go in Rhino, uh, use the gumball align to object to have this scaling here and rotation. And go back if you want to go to the line to C plane. Uh, and that's it. That's how you can play with these uh, lines to design your structure however you want. Okay, so that is how you can make this parametric structure in Grasshopper. Uh, I hope this algorithm is uh, useful. Remember to like this video and subscribe to our channel so you can get notified uh, about our new tutorials. See you next time. Bye.